So you will not kill an animal to eat it, but you will slaughter all manner of plant life and eat it. So you're okay with that, but not eating the animals. You have judged that your side of the tree of life is more important than this other side of the tree of life. So you want to value judge it? This is a mammal, this has a brain. All right, but have you stopped and thought about what a tree is? is true, yes, we are creating say. moral distinctions between animals, plants, and other life forms. The problem is Neil is viewing every living species as an abstraction, grouping every single form of life as being morally the same simply because they have life and have undergone evolution. The possession of life isn't what's important when assigning moral worth to an individual species. Case in point, Neil talks about oak trees and he makes out or says that the reason that we view oak trees differently to animals is because they don't have brains. But it's not the fact they don't have brains that's important, it's the fact that oak trees are not sentient. They don't have subjective experiences, they can't suffer or feel pain. That's the important thing when assigning moral worth, not the possession of life, but the possession of sentience. We basically eradicated smallpox, right? Well, what about the smallpox microbes? Right? How do they feel about this? The smallpox microbes don't feel anything about being wiped out precisely because they are microbes. They don't feel anything. They're not conscious and they're not sentient. Are we really so desperate to justify killing animals that we'll question the morality of wiping out microbes and safeguarding children from deadly diseases? I mean, where does this take us? Should we not take antibiotics because bacteria are alive? Should we not kill cancer cells because cancer cells are alive? I'm not, I'm not landed anywhere. I just think about all of life and all the struggles that life had to go through to get to where it is today in the tree of life, four and a half billion years after life began. But Neil, you're being disingenuous here because you have landed somewhere. By the fact that you eat animal products and therefore pay for sentient beings to be killed needlessly, by that fact alone, you have landed somewhere. This whole idea that you're discussing right now is precisely because you have landed somewhere and you're trying to justify where you have landed. So by Neil's logic, if you're driving down the road and a dog runs out in front of your car and you have two choices, the first choice being running over the dog and killing them, or the second choice being swerving onto a bed of roses and saving the life of the dog, by Neil's argument and logic, morally, both those actions are the same. And even if Neil's arguments were morally valid, because of the feed that's used to feed animals, and because animal farming is the number one driver of rainforest loss and habitat destruction, vastly more plants are killed for a non-vegan than they are for a vegan.
you so much. This next one's called Lucky Man. Something in my liberty on my mind. Happiness coming and going. I watch you look up and watch my feet are going on. Just who I am. And how many corners do I have to turn? How many times do I have to learn? All the love I have is in my mind But I'm a lucky man With fire in my hands Happiness, something in my own place Steady naked, smiling, I feel no disgrace Is coming and going. I watch you look up and watch my people going along. Just who I am. And how many corners do I have to turn? How many times do I have to learn? All the love I have is in my mind. I hope you understand. Ah, yeah. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. I got love to wear the ties on. Happiness, my lips, it's just a change of something in my liberty. Happiness, coming and going. I want you to look and watch my people go on and on.
All right, this is my last song. It's called Bittersweet Symphony. Thank you. Now 